great. A pack horse. Just what I need with all this gear. Quick, can we give me a hand? Oh! Oh! Yow! Hey, you're gonna give me a hand? What do you mean? I'm on a quest. As an astronomer, well, that's a scientist that studies stars and planets, I have a mission. I, Susie Cato, solemnly declare to investigate and experiment until I find the answer to the twinkle of the stars. So, you don't know by any chance, do you? Why do stars twinkle, hmm? Stars twinkle because they want to come out and look pretty and that's all. Because they're bright. Stars twinkle for light in the night. They like light, have their light, and they can light up and twinkle while the light lit up. Because they're um, bright and they're really high. Stars twinkle because they're way up high. Because of the dark. Stars twinkle because it, it tells you it's a night time. Stars twinkle because they're balls of gas. Because they're um, fire burning look like re a really long way away and fire kind of sparkles. Ah, you could be right, you know. But what if there was somebody up there turning the stars on and off, huh? Hmm, maybe not. You know, being an intrepid explorer, investigator, scientist, astronomer type person is pretty hard going. Maybe I don't need all of this stuff. Let's have a look. You know, the binoculars could come in handy later. But to begin with, why don't we start with the basic scientific tools? To discover why stars twinkle, perhaps we need to look at what a star is first. Well, now, astronomers have been studying stars and planets for centuries, and they've all pretty much come to the same conclusion. Stars are glowing balls of gas. <coughs> Hydrogen gas, actually. And what happens is the galaxy is full of clouds of dust and gas. Gravity pulls that dust and gas together to form a cloud. Now, imagine this balloon is a cloud of dust and gas. The cloud begins to rotate slowly, then faster and faster. And the particles of hydrogen gas bump and crash into each other. That causes heat friction. And the cloud gets hotter. And hotter. And hotter. And hotter. Until nuclear fusion occurs and the cloud begins to glow. <sighs> what was that? Oh, it's you. Yes, I was asleep, but I've been waiting here for quite some time. Where have you been? Oh, don't worry about that. You're here now, and that's all that matters. And look, there are about 5,000 stars that we can see with our naked eye up above us. Wow. But there are millions of stars in the billions of galaxies in our universe. And our sun is a star. Did you know that? It's a ball of nuclear fusion. But because it's so close to us, it gives us daylight as its glow. Those stars might actually be bigger and brighter than our star, the sun. It's just that they're further away. Millions and millions of kilometers further away. And because they're so far away, they only look like little dots of light. We can hardly see their light at all. Well, let me show you. This torch is a star. Uh, no, not a movie star, a star of nuclear fusion. And because we're so close to it, the light is bright and clear. But if it was further away... It's not as bright or as clear. And if it's further away still... The light 
is much smaller and dimmer. Get it? <sighs> Those balls of nuclear fusion are glowing 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But have you ever seen them glowing in the middle of the day? Good, because if you had, NASA would want a word with you. Because it's almost impossible to see those tiny little glows in the middle of the day with a naked eye. And this is why. One night sky full of twinkly stars. One sun. <gasps> Where have those stars gone? Who has stolen them? No one. It's just the bright light of the sun has cancelled out the twinkle of the stars. Until it's night time again. And those stars twinkle. One mega hot ball of nuclear fusion twinkling away. So why do stars twinkle? Well, scientists have come to the conclusion it's because space has bumps in it. No, really. Let me explain. Stars are millions and millions of kilometres away, right? Well, there's a lot of atmosphere between here and there. Lots of different layers of atmosphere and gas that moves around. Well, that movement causes waves. And those waves cause the light to bend. And that bending light gives the appearance of twinkly stars. Ah, I see the light. <laughs> Not a very big one, mind, but never mind, it'll do. Uh, before the days of compasses and satellite navigational tools, people used the stars to navigate by. Some of our greatest explorers would have used those stars. People like Captain Cook, although he might have been a bit confused when he first arrived in southern waters. If he's navigating with these stars, they're very different from the stars in England. And that's because over in England, they look out on a different patch of sky. In the Southern Hemisphere, we have stars that make up constellations like oh, the Southern Cross, and Maui's Hook, and people use those to navigate by. But not me, oh no, that's not a skill I have mastered yet. So I don't have a clue where I am, in fact, I'm lost, and I can't find my ship. <laughs> hey, why don't you become an amateur astronomer yourself? Look up at Nga Whetu and check out the Milky Way and Maui's fishhook. Maybe you have some questions you'd like answered on Susie's World. You can write to us at Susie's World, P.O. Box, 34307 Birkenhead, Auckland, or email me. My address is susie at treehut.com. Well, good night. Oh, watch yourself. Night. As an astronomer, I have a very important mission. And an astronomer is a scientist that really needs to get her words together people would have used the stars to navigate by. Some of our great explorers would have navigated using stars. People like Captain Cook. Mind you, could have got a bit confused the first time he arrived in the southern waters. We look out onto a very different patch of space and they Thanks to New Zealand On Air, we couldn't have done it without you.